Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my final favorites video for 2019 roundup. These are gonna be more of the um, luxury products that I was really in love with. So if you didn't see them yet, I did do a best of 2019 hair. Uh, drugstore makeup and clean makeup. So this is the remainder of the favorite products that I found myself using the most throughout this year. Um, and I did want to just uh, reflect on 2019 again. Um, I'm so excited that I was able to do this another year, uh, that you guys continue to watch and support me through this channel and my Instagram, just all my other social platforms. It really means a lot to me. Um, I started my channel just for fun when I was super young and it's really grown into something that I'm proud of. I'm very, um, I just feel so lucky and so blessed that I get to do this as my job and that you guys trust me enough <laughs> to watch me and take my recommendations and it really truly means so much to me. Um, as many of you guys do know, I do have a younger sister with Down syndrome and for about the past year and a half she's had um, some health issues and so by having this as my job, I've been blessed to be more flexible than I would have been otherwise. So I'm able to be there for my family and you know help out with her as much as I possibly can. So I'm so thankful and again, I just feel really blessed and 2019 was a really great year. Um, and I'm just, I'm so thankful for all of you guys. So. Thank you so much for all your continuous love and support. Um, I'm very excited for 2020. I wanna continue to do this and make better videos for you guys. So let's get into the favorites. Um, I just wanted to start it off with a thank you because I really love all of you guys so much and I appreciate all of you so much. So without rambling on and probably crying because I teared up a little bit. Um, okay, let's talk about my favorites for 2019. So I'm sure you guys know this by now. I'm not super loyal to that many priming products for my base. Um, I much more prefer to go in with an illuminator. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I went through two bottles of this this year. First, I purchased shade number four, used that up, and I really liked it because it was like pretty much the same color as my skin is naturally so I could wear it on its own and it gave me a little bit of coverage but tons of radiance and illumination. Now this is the shade 5 and if I do have a tan I can wear it on its own but you know naturally I do have more of like a light medium skin tone so you can see this on my skin uh, if I'm a little bit more less tanned. So um, I always wear it underneath makeup or on its own if I do have a little bit of a tan and I just think it makes my skin look so juicy and plump and radiant and I'm obsessed with it. It will forever be like part of my everyday staple. I mean, I traveled with this so much and the label has completely worn off because I just, I'm constantly using it and it's just completely flaked off. Now the other primer that I really loved was the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I was super loyal to this throughout the hotter months because it gripped my base makeup and I mean when I was in the hotter weather like you know July, August, it really made sure that even if my face was sweating the makeup stayed put. Like I can't even tell you guys how many times I wore this outside for like activities and then go to the bathroom, see my face drenched in sweat, but once the sweat dried, my makeup was still in place and uh, fully credit that to the Milk Hydro Grip. So it's great, it's very moisturizing. I'm not finding myself using it quite as much during these colder months because I really just wanna lather myself in moisturizer. But um, yeah, absolutely loved this and definitely gonna break this out once the warmer months start coming back around. I also had two illuminating products that I really liked to mix in with base products. This one I wear on its own or underneath makeup. Now these two I loved mixing into my foundations because I found they played really well. Um, the first was the NARS Super Radiant Booster. It looks like this is full, but I swear to you, like if I squeeze it, I have a really hard time getting product out because I mix this in with foundation almost every time I would wear it, just a tiny bit. Um, I also really love it on my neck and my shoulders. It looks beautiful just on your body to give you that little bit of glow. Um, I'm sad that it's almost gone, but this is the NARS Super Radiant Booster. It's a very universally flattering tone of rose gold. So it's got a little bit of a pinky peach vibe undertone to it. So it looks very alive and healthy. It's 
got a little bit more fleshiness than a traditional champagne which or pearl you know they don't really give you that warmth and that liveliness the shade of this is amazing for giving you like a little bit more of a you know healthy look you know what i'm saying okay and then the other one was the tarte rainforest of the sea radiance drops these are super fluid maybe you guys can hear that shaking around it's really watery and it's great to mix in with foundations that are a little bit more on the thick side and you want to show them out or just kind of make the formulation a little bit easier to work with and blend out on the skin a little bit easier. The illumination of it isn't anything that's too harsh. Uh, it's not going to make you look oily either. I just really like taking like a drop or two, two max. And anything that's a little bit thick or you're just having a difficult time getting it to blend in, this is a great mixing medium for those foundations. Now, the first foundation that I loved this year, I have to find it to show it on camera because I'm wearing it today and where I put it after I applied it, I don't know. I, I must have put it under my bathroom sink or something and I can't find it. It's the NARS Natural Radiance Foundation. I've shown it in so many videos. It's the one in the square bottle. Well, there's a couple in there. It's not the super, it's not the sheer glow. It's the other one that has the pump. Um, it's super long wearing. It's one of my favorite foundations because it's long wearing, but it feels really lightweight. It's not drying and it has a really nice flexible finish on the skin. Now, some people do find this to be a little bit more of a dewy foundation on their skin type. I, however, find it to be quite uh, satin to matte on my skin and I always go back in and re-add some highlights so uh, you know where it's just foundation you can tell I don't have a lot of light reflection going on but I did put highlight uh, and I just love how long wearing this foundation is it is so long wearing like you can put your makeup on in the morning and then wear that makeup out at night it just it lasts all day I don't use a special primer with it and it never looks like too cakey or heavy. I fell in love with the Dior Backstage Foundation. This was one of my favorites this summer because it's more of a satin powder finish foundation. Feels super lightweight, stays nice and matte on my skin. And I just, I loved how lightweight it was and I thought it photographed beautifully. I loved this during the summer. I was wearing it almost every single day this summer and I still keep it in my everyday makeup because I do find myself reaching for it quite often. So. Loved Dior Backstage. Um, this is probably not gonna be a surprise to you guys because I used this again constantly. This was probably my favorite everyday foundation all throughout the entire year, the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I went through two bottles of this this year. So this is the second repurchase that I've done of this. I love this so much because it's a satin finish foundation it feels super lightweight but it is so radiant and luminous as the name would say but it just looks really beautiful and healthy on your skin and i like how i can wear this anywhere from sheer barely there practically undetectable coverage to like full flawless full glam coverage and then the other one that i really wanted to mention because i was a big fan of it was the pat mcgrath skin fetish foundation this is another satin finish i think you guys see the theme I love a good satin finish foundation. Um, this one I really liked because it was really long wearing, felt super lightweight, and it just played really well with whatever I wanted to use with it. So the unique thing about this foundation specifically that I loved was I could put creams and liquids on top of it and the formulation did not break down. That's not the case with every foundation, but this one specifically, just plays well with creams, liquids, um, whatever you want to put on top of it. It's not going to break down or create any patchiness. The coverage is amazing and it's just, it's really nice, really lightweight, great foundation. Concealer, probably not going to be a surprise to any of you guys. My favorite every day. I mean, it's always like I literally every single time I use one up, I repurchase another one. Um, NARS Radiant Creamy. It is my favorite. It is my go-to. I just love everything about it. It's got great customizable coverage. It looks very radiant and youthful under my eyes. I never find it to be drying. Um, it's great if you wanna do a little bit of liquid highlighting as well. It's just the formulation that I love about it. It's just so easy to work with. Fingers, brushes, sponges. It's just a great go-to concealer. I bounce between the shades Ginger and Caramel depending on the time of year and my skin tone. 
Now the other one that I really loved was a new favorite. It's the MAC 24 hour concealer. Again, bounce between a couple shades depending on the time of year. This concealer is very long wearing and it's pretty much self setting. I like the way it sets down to more of a flexible satin finish and I rarely ever put powder on top because I just feel like it doesn't really need it and it makes a really great eyeshadow primer as well. And then my favorite touch up concealer was the NARS, um, I was gonna say the NARS Hourglass, <laughs> the Hourglass Veil. This is really interesting because it's actually formulated to be used as a touch up concealer. So it's really lightweight. It's not too creamy. It's quite almost watery in consistency. I don't know how well you guys can see. It just looks really wet. Um, and then once it dries down, it looks like you just applied under eye concealer, but not to the point where it's like getting cakey and it looks like it's on top of a bunch of other makeup. I used it multiple times a week without fail throughout the entire year because it just refreshes your under eye makeup and kind of takes care of all the creepies or if the makeup has worn around your eyes and it's migrating or just not looking quite as fresh, it really refreshes better than anything. Next up is powders. You guys know how I am about powder. I have a drier skin type, so I most of the time don't set my makeup, but it is a nece necessary step sometimes. Um, I'm just super picky with them because I don't like how they uh, kind of exaggerate the dryness of my skin, settle into like a certain dry patches and just make me look like the Crypt Keeper, so I'm very picky. Um, this is not a surprise to you guys, the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Powder. I have three different shades of this because it's my favorite powder. Even when you look at it in a pan, you can see that it reflects back a lot of light and it just, you can set your makeup with this and your skin will still look like skin and it has a nice radiant quality to it. It also doesn't feel chalky or dry. So I adore this powder. And then my other favorite was the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Powder, which is actually a loose powder. So a little tiny, tiny bit from the lid and on a big fluffy brush, just patting it where I need it. And this tends to make your makeup last a lot longer than any other powder I tried. So I loved this, especially during the hot months when I really wanted to make sure that the makeup in my T-zone was gonna stay in place. Um, and I just, I love it. It's nice and lightweight. Doesn't make me look or feel chalky. Doesn't make me look or feel dry. And I just really enjoyed both of those. For contouring, I do like a cooler toned bronze shade, but I don't want it to be like overly gray. And I really loved the Tarte Park Avenue Princess um, Contour Palette. These powders are so pigmented. I just like tap into them and I can get a really great contour going. My favorites were Princess Cut and Angle. Uh, Carrot and Crown are a little bit more of bronzy shades, but I really liked this. It's just quite large so I used it when I was at home but I never traveled with it and my favorite one to travel with slash use a lot was the Kevin Aquan uh, sculpting powder this is a great cool toned contour I contoured with it today I think it looks really natural and it's great for creating like a true shadow tone on your face um, again super pigmented so this is probably gonna last me a while um, and I just I really like how it comes in this tiny package, it's just a lot more convenient. Now, in terms of bronzers, my favorite this year, hands down, Becca Ipanema Sun, repurchased it, and I just, nothing is as flattering on my skin tone as this one. All year round, it looks great and just brings so much life, and it's got this really great golden but still has a little bit of red to it undertone and it just really looks like an actual you know bronzed tan on my skin now the other one that I was absolutely obsessed with was the Tom Ford intensity one cream bronzer and highlight and I'm sure you guys can see I actually really like mixing some of the bronzer in with the highlight and creating like more of a beigey brown toned highlight rather than having it be um, this kind of like silver clear highlight. I use this so much. I love it so much. I know that it is pricey, but it truly is the best cream bronzer I've tried. And I just, 
I love it so much. It looks like skin when you blend it out. You can wear it on top of your makeup or use it underneath your makeup and it just, it always looks so beautiful. And I just, I love the shades. I love the way it's like balmy and it looks like healthy, dewy skin. And I just, I'm, I love it. I love cream bronzer. I think it's amazing. I did have a specific blush that I felt like I wore the most throughout the year, regardless of the season, the Sunkissed Nudies Matte from Nude Sticks. I love all of these, but this specific shade I just really liked. I thought it was flattering regardless of the season, regardless of the lip or eye look I was wearing. It's just fleshy and looks really natural like something that your cheeks would actually produce and I like the matte version because it stays in place a lot longer and then powder blushes I cannot recommend this to you guys enough I really like how it has every single shade you could potentially want and these blushes are quite pearlescent and they just look really radiant and juicy on the cheek it's the NARS exposed cheek palette I love all of these they're just so beautiful. Um, the tiniest bit, just tap in there, you get a ton of pigment. They're super pigmented. I mean, I just barely have to touch in there. And you get so much pigment. They look really great on the cheeks because they have that radiance to them. So they never look flat. Uh, they just give you that really healthy, kind of child look, juicy apple of the cheek. So adore them used it constantly. My favorite highlight, powder highlight of the year was the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish in Whisper of Guilt. It is the highlight that I'm wearing today. It gives you that like wet, glassy, glossy look on your skin without, you know, being wet to the touch. So I love this. I love the shade. It's gold and I just think it works with my skin tone really well. Um, I reached for this so much. And then the other two that I was obsessed with, um, this one's actually a spray highlight, which I didn't think I was gonna like. I thought it was gonna be hard to work with, but it is almost like an aerosol powder. So it doesn't feel wet or tacky. And it, again, just gives you that like airbrushed, really like soft all over highlight. I love it. I've used it in multiple videos. The Patrick Ta we need her which is the gold pearl i also have the pink pearl which i like as well so these are the major glow highlights and you just spray it lightly onto the high points of your face and it always looks like you had one of those machines and like sprayed the most perfect little glisten of highlight on your skin so obsessed with that and then the other one was the nudies hey honey stick Again, this one's a gold. I love a gold highlight. This one's a little bit more balmy um, and truly looks wet and juicy on your skin. Um, let's talk about my favorite setting spray, the Tatcha Dewy Luminous Skin Mist. I will never not repurchase this. It is my favorite setting spray year round. It just always makes your skin look healthy, dewy, radiant, no matter what. It's milky, it's got a pearlescence to it. Um, I just love how juicy and like Nanvo is always saying dewy dumpling. Like this is how you get that juicy dewy dumpling skin. It has been a favorite, a staple in my makeup collection for as many years as I've been using it. So I love this. I will never not love it. <laughs> It'll probably always be my favorite setting spray for as long as I am doing makeup. I was also very obsessed with faux freckles and just accentuating the freckles that I do have because I think it makes your base look a lot more natural, less made up, and more youthful. I loved Freck. This, I'm always on the brink of losing it. It is so tiny. It's smaller than my ear, <laughs> but it's long lasting. It looks like real freckles. Um, I've had it for almost six months. It still has a ton of product in it. so. I do think it is worth the steep price point. I do see myself repurchasing it because it creates the most realistic, long-lasting freckles. Every time I am done using it, I like put it away. When I take it out, I take it out with two hands. I don't want to lose this. I one time thought it went through a floor vent and I was devastated because I was, I actually, I'm not even kidding you guys. The first time I got this stuff, I saw it in a little box and I was like, oh, they gave me a little sample with the big bottle so I can travel with the little bottle. No, 
this was it. This was all that came in the box when I ordered it. So yeah, it's so tiny. Anywho, let's move into um, eye products. So my favorite eyeliners this year, definitely gonna go to the long wearing gel eyeliners from Marc Jacobs. I love the shade Brownie and then Blackout. And then Roach and Double Life from Urban Decay. I will forever repurchase these. They're the most perfect everyday eyeliners when you want something that you can make either really subtle or really intense. You guys know me, I love drugstore mascara. I'm like truly a drugstore mascara girl, but when I find a prestige mascara that I really love, I love that super hard too. And the Dior, Dior Show Mascara, I cannot not love this. I take a break from it for a few months and then I repurchase it and I put it on my eyeballs and I'm like, whoa. It gives you the most gorgeous, dramatic, wispy length, like old Hollywood film siren lashes in a tube. It is amazing. I love it so much. And then my other favorite is the Chanel Inimitable Mascara. And I'm wearing this on my lashes today. I love how easy this is to build. Um, it gives you clean definition and clean volume with like sky high length. So I love that it's super lengthening and the brush is a little bit smaller. It's actually a lot smaller than Dior Show so it's really easy to work with and just gives you insane length and really nice clean separation and it just like, I mean, look how long my lashes look today. Like this stuff, it's the real deal. I'm not kidding. This year was definitely a cream eyeshadow year for me. I really loved the way they were easy to apply. They look a little bit more smudgy and effortless. And I do find that sometimes when I'm wearing a lot of powder eyeshadows, I just get bored with it. Like I, I like the way cream kind of evolves throughout the day and looks a little bit different <laughs> throughout the hours of the day. So I loved the Laura Mercier Caviar Eye Stick Cream Pencils, uh, Cream Shadow Pencils. I used these without a doubt like almost every single time I did my eye makeup. They make a great base, but they also look really beautiful on their own as well. I also loved the Laura Mercier Chrome Veil Liquids. These are beautiful and they come with a doe foot applicator. They just glide over your eyes gorgeously. My favorite shade, I mentioned it to you guys so many times, Gilded Fresco. It just looks so beautiful on the eyelid. And then Bronze Eye Bay from Nude Sticks. Again, major favorite that I know I talked to you guys about so many times. The cool thing about the Nude Sticks ones is you can actually use them on your skin as well, so you can put them on the face. And just look how much reflection a liquid shadow has. I was also really in love with the Tom Ford. These are the cream and powder eye color dupes, du duos. <laughs> this one is in Gorgeous Peach. I wore this to death over the summer. Like I wore this almost every single day in the summer because I just think it looks so beautiful in the summer to have like that really gorgeous peach cream on the lid and then it does have like a gold glitter top coat which i didn't find myself using quite as much but this cream peach to die for can't wait to be like bronzed and tan and wearing it again this summer and then the other favorite which i mentioned to you guys many times the natasha denona crystal top coats this one is in the shade nude which i liked using a lot um, it just gives you that like wet glass look on your eye without actually being wet. And then I also really loved the one in the shade bronze as well. Uh, it really looks great on top of dark brown bases because it adds like a little bit more dimension to it. But it also looks really nice on its own. But I liked it on top of stuff a little bit more. But yeah, I don't know. 2019 I was just like cream shadows are easier and they look I think more like model off duty. Two major lip liners. The first is gonna be the IT Cosmetics. Uh, this is the waterproof lip liner, I believe. Waterproof lip liner stain, that's what they're called. Um, and this one is in the shade Blushing Nude, which I thought was like the most gorgeous, fleshy, your lips but better. Probably the most perfect shade of lip liner I've come across thus far, I know. That's a big statement, but I, I think I'm gonna stick with it because I really, really love this one. And then the other one was the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in the shade Super Size Me, which I also really loved. I really narrowed down my lip favorites to my favorites. So I had so many that I was like wanting to mention to you guys, but I was like, what did you really wear all year? 
slash what did you repurchase because you used it up. So that is what I narrowed it down to. So the first is going to be, let's talk about these glosses first, I guess. So the first one is the Dior Gloss. This is the Dior Plumping Gloss, the Lip Maximizer Hyaluronic Lip Plumper. And this is in the shade 12. I think it's called Rosewood, but it just says 12 on the bottom. I love these. I have almost every single shade of this lip gloss because I really think it makes your lips look really glassy and wet and plumped up. So I swear by the Dior Lip Maximizers. And then the other one that I wore a ton was the Nude Sticks. These are the lip glosses and I wear the shade Nude 06. They kind of developed these to create a perfect nude shade for a multitude of skin tones and I do think this one is the most flattering for my skin tone. Um, and they again make your lips look super wet and glassy, which I love in a lip gloss. This is the Lancome lipstick that I believe came out with the Chiara Ferragini collection. It's in the shade Independent Woman. I like how this is a really glossy, more medium sheer mauve with like a ton of shimmer. It looks very balmy and very healthy on the lips. And again, these types of shades I really like when they're a little bit more on the sheer side because you can reapply it without having to look into a mirror. So they're just a little bit more convenient to keep in your bag. Now this one was my favorite like fully opaque nude. I wore this to death. It's on its last leg. It's going to need to be repurchased. This is as far as it can extend now. This is the Influencer Lip Stilo from Hourglass. I think it is the most perfect fleshy beigey nude that doesn't make you look dead because it does have a little bit of pink and peach to it so it looks a little bit more lively and not too beige or cool toned so I love this it's very creamy it doesn't feel drying uh, I don't have any gloss or balm underneath it and it still gives you that like healthy lip look which I like this was a repurchase and I think it's like my favorite sheer shimmery nude of all time. I've talked about this with you guys before. This is Chanel Pensive. If I ever come to a day where I don't repurchase this, it's because I found something better, but I just haven't yet. Um, this is a beautiful beige nude with a pearl to it, but it's not fully opaque. Again, it's one of those like semi sheer lipsticks. So it just looks like healthy lip without being like fully opaqued out. So it's a lighter nude, but because it has shimmer to it and it's not fully opaque, it doesn't look dead or drying on you. And I also feel like on me, it kind of pulls like a little bit more on the coral side. So it just looks good all year round, in my opinion. I love it. And then the last one is from NARS. You guys can tell this is a favorite. Uh, this is Belle Du Jour, which is a sheer nude. And I feel like j-lo when i'm wearing this because it is sheer it's like kind of that like creamy caramel with like a little bit of a peachy vibe to it i just feel like it gives you that j-lo lip vibe she always has the most perfect nude with like a glossy finish on it because she just always looks amazing and you can use it to top on other lip colors just to kind of make them a little bit more milky but it has a beautiful amount of shine to it and it just I love it with a lip liner because then you just kind of have like a glossy nude lip and it's easy to reapply. It's sheer so it, you know, still lets your own lip color peek through a bit. So it doesn't make you look dead. That's the main thing with nudes. I just don't want them to make me look dead. And I like them for every day because they always look really natural. Last thing I want to just mention to you guys are the Lumify eye drops. I swear by these if you have red eyes. Obviously you do not use them every single day, but if it's for a special event and you have bloodshot eyes or you just really need your eyes to look more like awake and super paper white. These are amazing. They are the best eye drops I've ever tried. I've gotten so many of my friends personally turned on to them. Even I have I turned on one of my guy friends to these. He like keeps them in his dop kit now because uh, he's in med school and so like his eyes are getting bloodshot a lot. So he uses them in the morning and he said that they are the best eye drops he's ever tried. So uh, they're great especially if you're gonna be taking photos or, you know what I mean? Like sometimes your eyes just are bloodshot, they're strained, and they don't look as fresh and awake. I swear by these, I cannot recommend them enough. Um, but other than that guys, those were all of my favorites. I didn't have any brow favorites this year. I just didn't. No brow products wowed me. 
Um, so if there was any product that you didn't see in this roundup, it's probably because I just didn't have a favorite in that specific category and didn't feel like it deserved a spot because I wanted to talk about all the things that I was like super in love with. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to hit me up in the comments down below. I'm gonna list and link everything in the description box down below for you guys. Let me know some other types of beauty videos that you guys wanna see coming up for 2020. I'm very excited for this year with you guys and to create content for you guys and I am just so excited. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Please subscribe if you didn't earlier. Um, I'd also love it if you guys would come follow me on Instagram as well. Leave a comment just so we can talk to each other and I'll see you guys in my next video. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.